Hello, Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the Intelli Machines. It's our third video on Python. In the last video, we have seen what is Python Shell and what is Python Idle, and we have seen the detailed difference between both of them. The link of that video is added in the description below. If you have not watched that video yet, then you can access it from the link given below. In this video, we are going to discuss about Python PyCharm and its interface. Also, we will look at some basic Python course, including integers, float, string, variables, and data types. But before starting this video, if you are new to this channel, then please subscribe to this channel because it's only the way you can get notifications of our upcoming videos. And please make sure you watch the entire series in sequence, so you can get better understanding of the course. On your screen, you can see it's an official website of PyCharm. Here is the URL of this website in the address bar. You can download PyCharm from this website. For your ease, I have also added this URL in the description below. Here you can see there are two versions of PyCharm available. You can download any of them because both of them meets our basic requirement. The first version is for professional users. It's on trial basis and after the trial basis you may have to pay for it by using this version you can also use html javascript sql languages on pycharm and the other one is community version of pycharm it's open source and free version of pycharm i will recommend you to download this version because here in these lectures our core focus will be on python instead of any other languages so i hope you can download and install pycharm like any other regular software there is nothing technical in its installation once you successfully download and install it please open it through your desktop or using this search box it may take few seconds for display to be visible Once you open the PyCharm, you can see this window, it's the PyCharm interface. Here you will find different menus with a lot of options. We will discuss them in detail when required in our upcoming videos. But for now, keep the things simple. First thing first, we will see how to create a Python file in PyCharm. To create a Python file, click on File menu, a drop down option will appear where you can create a new project by clicking on New Project or you can simply click on the option of new now here you have to click on python file you can name it anything but for now i am naming it intellimachines here you can see a blinking cursor it's a pycharms window editor you can write edit or execute your course in this window but before writing anything here Let's discuss them one by one. Integers are the whole number without any decimal, for example 2, 3, 4, but without any decimal. Coming to the float, any number with decimal is known as float, for example 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. About strings, you can simply say these are the text messages. So the text can be anything, it can be letters, it can be numbers, or even it can be any special character. Variables are the container of any type of information or data. As an example, if we write name is equal to Ali, then here name is variable or identifier, whereas Ali is the information or data which is stored against the variable name. Data type is a function in Python, and using this function, we can check either the information is integer, float, or string. Complex numbers are written with a J and here J is the imaginary part. Use of complex numbers is fairly an advanced mathematical feature. Therefore, complex numbers have their uses in many applications related to mathematics and Python provides useful tools to handle and manipulate them. Now before jumping into the PyCharm window editor, there is few information about variable that you should know. A variable name can be anything, but it must start with a letter or underscore. 
it cannot be start with any number. Likewise, a variable name cannot contain any special character like hash key, asterisk, or any other symbol. And the last and most important thing that you must keep in mind. Python is a case sensitive language. So here capital A and small a both will be the separate variables. Now without wasting any further time let's jump into the PyCharm and watch things practically. So here we have PyCharm's window editor. Here I am going to write my first Python statement. Print is a function in Python that outputs whatever you say you want to print out. So in first line I want to print 3 and in second line I want to print the sum of 3 plus 3. So I just write here two python statements. You can see at the left side of each python statement is a line number. So these line numbers will help you in coding. It will be very useful especially when you are on a large project. You might be facing difficulty in reading the python statements. Let me zoom it for you. Okay, so now it's looking pretty good. At the end of this lecture, I will also tell you that how can you zoom in or zoom out using your mouse scroll bar as a bonus tip. Now here we have two ways to get the output of these statements. The first way is to simply click on this play button. And if you want to use any short key, then please press Ctrl plus Shift plus F10. As soon as you run this command, you can see the output of our statements. Here is the output of our first statement which is 3 and right below it we have 6 which is the sum of 3 plus 3 which was our second python statement. Please notice here that the color of word print is blue. As we have just discussed before that python is a case sensitive language. If I capitalize the first letter of print in first statement and in second line if I capitalize all the letters then you can see a red line under both these words which means it's not a valid python function anymore so if i execute this command now then you can see an error message as an output so while using python please keep in mind that python is a case sensitive language let's say if i want to write any random whole number for example if i choose 6 then i will simply write print 6 and if here you want to check its data type then you can check it simply by writing type just before 6. Now if you execute this code the python will show you class integer which is represented as int. Now if I slightly change 6 to 6.0 and run this command again then you can see the python is now showing me its class float it's all about integer and float and shortly we will see how can we convert one type into another for now we have covered integers float and data types now coming to complex numbers as we have already discussed complex numbers always end with the letter J and here J is the imaginary part. Use of complex numbers is fairly an advanced mathematical feature. Therefore complex numbers have their uses in many applications related to mathematics and Python provides useful tools to handle and manipulate them. For now we will not go into its detail but you should have a basic idea of it. As an example, if I write print 7j and check its type using data type function, then it will show its class as complex. Now I am going to write a string statement. Please remember always write your text between the quotation marks. It doesn't matter if you write it in a single quotation mark or double quotation mark. But whatever you choose, please be consistent with it. To show this, I am writing two separate statements, one with double quotation and other with single quotation. So my first statement is welcome to Intelli machines within double quotation. And my second statement is 
please subscribe and share this video with your friends within single quotation now when i execute this code you can see both of these lines just appeared without any error so that's mean you can use both double quotation and single quotation but if we started with double quotation and ended up with single quotation or vice versa then we will end it up with an error just like this so consistency is very important and to check its data type i will simply write type just before my text Now if I execute this code then you can see the class of this statement is str which is representing string. We will shortly discuss some more features of string function but now quickly go through to variables. As we have already discussed we can store any information against any variable or we can also say that variables are the container of any information or data. A variable name can be anything but it cannot be start with any number instead it must start with any letter or underscore likewise a variable name cannot contain any special character like hash key steric or any other symbol and the last and most important thing that you must keep in mind python is a case sensitive language so here capital a and small a both will be the separate variables as an example if i write name is equal to paul then here name is the variable while pal is the data which is stored against the variable name now if i write print name then it will display pal as a result and other example if i write small a is equal to small and capital a is equal to subscribe and now if i use print function then both these words for example small and subscribe will appear because both are separate variables as python is a case sensitive language but if i reuse any variable again then python will call the variable with latest or updated data for example if i update the value of small a with intelli machines and now if i execute the code then you can see that word small is replaced by intelli machines and one more thing that you can write multiple variables in one line too by separating them using semicolons for example a is equal to hello semicolon b is equal to world similarly i can call both these variables in print function in a single line by separating them using a comma and here you can see the result for now we have covered almost everything but now it's time to discuss some more features of string function you can use backslash n to line break your text message for example if i write welcome to backslash n in tele machines then you can see it's showing me this text in two separate lines and if you want to write some multiple lines then you have to put triple quotation marks before and after the lines pycharm is an intelligent and powerful software i will show you its one example let's say if i want to write two line statement and i start writing within double quotes now when i press enter after finishing my first line it will automatically add double quotes with my new line here you can see output text without any error 
but in the case if I copy it from any other source like notepad or word and paste it here and now if I execute the code then it will end up with an error but in the case if you have large content and you can't write it on PyCharm then copy the content from its source and paste in the PyCharm and to make it work simply add triple quotes in the start and at the end So that's all about multi-line statements. One more thing that you can use addition mark to add one or more variables. For example, if I have this data in variable A and this data in variable B. Now if I write print A plus B, then it will add the data of both variables in one line. But here please notice that you can see there is no space between them but you can add space by adding space between a and b within quotation mark and now if i execute the code then you can see that there is space between both these lines so using addition mark you can add multiple variables in one line we can also check the length of any word or statement by adding len just before the word or statement then it will show me the number of characters and here are some other functions that you can perform just like microsoft word for example you can capitalize all the text of any paragraph similarly you can perform upper and lower case functions also there is a long list of string methods it's not possible to cover everything in this video for now i am only covering lower and upper case function if you want a full list then please like my facebook page and reach to my inbox i will share the full list file with you and you can apply all other methods in very similar way as i am going to apply upper and lowercase method here the link of my facebook page is given below in the description box so let's take a look on it i just write it in small letters to convert it into uppercase simply add a dot and write upper with brackets and now if I execute the code then you can see that all my text is converted into uppercase. Now I am copying it and replacing it with this and now I want to write this statement in lowercase. So I will replace the word upper with lower and when I execute the code now then you can see all my letters are converted into lowercase. So these were just two examples. Don't forget to get a full list from my Facebook page. Now it's time to share the today's bonus tip with you. As I promised earlier, you can use your mouse scroll bar to zoom in or zoom out. To enable this function, click on file menu and here click on settings or alternatively you can simply press alt plus control plus s. Now here you can see the settings menu. Please click on editor tab and click on general. Where you can see the mouse section, please check here the second option and click OK. That's all. Now you can zoom in or zoom out by simply pressing Ctrl key and moving your mouse scroll bar. So that's all for today. If you like this video then please don't forget to share it with your friends and with your social groups. And don't forget to subscribe our channel if you want to get updates of our new videos.